how did it feel when you got that medal? I, I just, I, I have to hear it from you. How did you feel? I don't even remember. I was just mostly in shock. So full of emotions that I was just so excited that like all my hard work paid off. And like, how cool is it to go to Olympics where we've all had these trials, we all went through COVID and we all still ended up with a medal. Each and every one of us on that Olympic team representing Team USA went home with a medal. Like, how cool is that? It's amazing. Michaela, you made a huge announcement last week. Was it last week? Mm, a few weeks ago, yeah. Tell us that weeks. announcement. I'm pregnant. We're having a baby. So we're super excited. Tell me your most trying time as, as a gymnast. Was there ever a moment where you're like, what am I doing? No more? Like All the time. There are so many times where I was cheated out and there's so much politics involved. It was horrible. It was hard. A lot of people don't get to know the behind the scenes and what actually really happens. And now that I'm done with gymnastics, I want to explain what I went through. Are we ready to rock and roll? Yeah, whenever you're ready. I'm trying to figure out what my my opening line should be. Do you have any suggestions? Like, welcome to another... <laughs> we had to oh, work yeah. on this for a while. Well, what did we, you, uh, what did you guys, this is all, by the, by the way, we've started the podcast. Okay. So this is, okay. Oh, it's already recorded. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to intro her after she gives me the idea. We just do like, I say, Hey everybody. Welcome back to our podcast where we agree to disagree. A lot of different things. Today, we're going to be talking about. <laughs> That's cute. But I don't have like, a <laughs> I don't have like a partner in crime unless it's Michelle from behind the camera. <laughs> Welcome. To hi. hi. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just start with another podcast, and we're ho so happy you're here, and I am so excited to have my guest today. This is Miss Michaela Skinner. <laughs> excited to be here. Olympian medalist. Um, I, I I'll start by saying, I don't think you have any idea how my little boys had such a crush on you. They really? they were like That's in cute. love, Jonas. They were like in love with. Great taste. They came running. <laughs> <laughs> it came Usually running it's up the, the other screen. way around. Michaela's on. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so hot. Anyway, That's cute. Yeah, so not to make you blush, but um, anyway, I'm excited for this. I have a bunch of fun questions. The best part about all this is that her significant other gets to work with me every day, and he's right over there. And he's not supposed to say much unless it's absolutely <laughs> appropriate or necessary. So, um, Michaela, you made a huge announcement last week. Was it last week? A few weeks ago, yeah. Tell us that weeks. announcement. I'm pregnant. We're having a baby. So we're super excited. It's the first and a little nervous. Oh, you'll be great. And I've been horribly sick. So it's been quite the journey. Never thought pregnancy would be so hard. I know people say it's hard, but you don't really get to experience it till you live it. Yeah. Yes. But it's, we're excited. It, it's, it's tough. And, you know, it can be tough for the husband as well. <laughs> it's so tough no no i'm just i'm i'm, I'm maybe teasing. when the baby comes it'll be tough well yeah you need to put him to work yeah. <laughs> you need to put him to work so this is the first and before this uh show started they started going through names can we discuss some of these names sometimes people are kind of protective about names you're discussing because in my family they steal names true story yeah people have already stole my name so normally I, normally i don't talk about it uh -oh. i mean we haven't talked about it like to anybody besides family so well, I don't maybe, know. Maybe we should Jonas? keep it. Jonas, should we hold off? I mean, I don't care, but Michaela was pretty upset when one of our names got stolen. So we'll hold off. Well, we'll hold off for now. Yeah. Maybe we can make a round two later. Yeah, we had we had two of my sisters in law exchanged names, and one of them took them took the one name before the other. But it's it's funny how names just become their name. So it could. I think it. I can't remember which. I think it was Live. Live is Live, and I think that anyway. Yeah, don't don't uh, steal names from your siblings. It's messed up, man. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Michaela, give us a little background. We know you're an Olympian. Where did you grow up? It was Arizona, right? Yep, Gilbert, Arizona is where I grew up. Where'd you go to high school? Higley High School. Higley, Higley. I don't think Higley was around when I went to school out there. When do you know when it was? I don't percent? know, because yeah. it's still Higley when now it's all Gilbert, but they still kept it Higley School District. Yeah. So it's weird. But... Yeah, interesting. So I know a little bit. Of course, we we know each other. We've known each other for a while. In fact, Michaela did. Uh, a, a gig campaign. It's been like a year now. We got to do another one. Yeah, we do, and it's one. It's been one of the better ones. So it was fun. It was a. It was a biggest fail video, because Michaela, as an Olympian, she failed time and time and time again, 
to eventually get to where she was at. Did you start gymnastics when you were little, little? Little, little. Pretty much since I came out of the womb. Really? Basically. I mean, all my siblings did gymnastics, so I was kind of like their rag doll. They just tossed me left and right. But I didn't start till I was five. So, I mean, a little bit later than I feel like most gymnasts that grow up in a gym family. They start, you know, two, three. But my mom just put me in when I was five, and I skipped levels really quick. I had a lot of talent. Wow. So, awesome. kind of crazy, but... Your, t- your two older sisters were also gymnasts, right? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yep. So here's a question. Do you feel like the younger siblings have an advantage as, you know, being younger with older siblings that are athletes? Do you think that's there's an advantage to that? Oh, I always feel like there is. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I feel like the baby is always the best. The, the best athlete. I know Steve would say that. That's my youngest brother. <laughs> Yeah. Um, although we know that that is not the case. Actually, Steve, you were a great athlete. That's the only time I'll ever tell you that. However, um, we talked about this yesterday. You know, my my youngest, Tommy, he he seems to pick up sports quickly. I don't know if it's because we're spoiled and we kind of learn from the other siblings. I don't For sure. know what it is. For it's sure it weird. is. I mean, it's it's like, I mean, if you put a kid with a, you know, a basketball player that's in eighth grade and he's playing with juniors and seniors, he has to rise up, right? It's true. So um, I, I do think that there is definitely an advantage there. But and I was the oldest. I was probably still the best athlete. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's definitely an advantage, I think, for the younger siblings. So um, tell me, real, I know everyone knows you're an Olympian. Tell me your most trying time as, as a gymnast. And did you ever have a moment where you were going to give up? I'm, I'm always fascinated by people that, that – um, go through failure and failure time time and time again but was there ever a moment where you're like what am i doing no more like all the time i i don't know what it is but gymnastics was just rough for me like the judges didn't like me like they liked me but like i just never got the scores i deserved i always had to work way harder than everybody else and i mean i i could go on right now and talk about 50 stories jonas could be like she could talk for hours because i could because my story is just so crazy and that's why I want to write a book about it because a lot of people don't get to know the behind the scenes and what actually really happens. And now that I'm done with gymnastics, I want to explain what I went through because it was horrible. It was hard. And I mean, at the age of 12, that was, I mean, a big chapter for me. I just started going into like the elite program, which is the Olympic route. And there's so much politics involved. But then when you get into elite, it's like 10 times worse. And There are so many times where I was cheated out. Um, I think the biggest time for me where I had to really sit down and think if this is what I want to do was at the Nastia Lukin Cup. And so this was where a lot of gymnasts would be kind of J.O. and kind of doing a lead at the same time before they fully transition into the process. But Nastia puts on this Nastia Lukin Cup. And so it's a J.O. competition and certain gymnastics meets like my gym will host it at their Fiesta Bowl and they put it on. And the winner from like each meet um, that holds the Nastia Lucan Cup makes it to the Nastia Cup. So the, before when I went, I did the very first one and the second one. And before they only had just like the juniors and seniors were against each other. Now they have a junior division and a senior division. So when I did it, it was a little bit more tougher. Um, but it was the second Nastia Cup I made it to. And I was throwing hard skills. Like I was doing a two and a half on vault, which is what I competed in the Olympics. Yeah. At a very young age, I was probably like 14, 15, 14, I think I want to say, when yeah. I competed at the second yeah. Nastia Cup. And you were hitting these? Every- hitting it, doing, I was doing big, tough skills because I was also training elite. Yeah. So it was kind of like that transition of kind of doing both. But anyway, I competed a two and a half on vault and that was the third event. And then I had bars last. So I went and did my two and a half on vault and they gave me like a really low score. And it shouldn't have been that because with my difficulty, there's no way I could have scored that. So my coach is sitting there like, what the heck's going on? You know, we're so confused. And then we go to bars and nailed that bar routine. And I was like in first place for a while. Then I, after vault, I kind of moved down in the rankings. So long story short, the meet finishes and Jordan Weber was competing in the American Mm -hmm. Cup the next day, which is an elite meet that the U.S. puts on. Yeah. And so... um. Marta, the Olympic coach, was wanting Jordan Weber to win. And her teammate was in the Nastia Cup. So they wanted her teammate to win as long as she hit everything. So that would be a precursor to making Jordan Weber win the American Cup. 
Wow. Which doesn't make sense to me. I just think that's dumb because she could yeah. still mess up. Yeah, exactly. Do something wrong. Like, anyway, um, and I just remember the meet gets over. They're announcing the top three finalists at Nastia Cup. They dim the lights. They pull me out with the other two finalists. And I didn't even place in the top three. They were just trying to lower my scores enough that hopefully I'd still play second. But they messed it up so bad that I didn't even place in the top three. So a lady comes up, pulls me off the floor, and then puts the right person in. And at that point, like, I didn't know what was going on. We were so confused. We didn't know. And I remember going into the hotel room that night after the meet was over. I'm with my family. And, you know, the girl that won was, you know, everyone was like, oh, you know, she won and all these all these things, you know. And I'm just sitting here crying, like, what happened, you know. And so Jeez. Marta called my coach, Lisa, into the room. And they talked. And she said, this is what happened, told her the story and said, we know Michaela's an amazing athlete. We want to start having her come to national team training camps. This is what we did. And it's going to be a long, hard journey. But if Michaela's willing to do it, we're ready to take her. Wow. And so I had a lot to pray about, a lot to think about. Wow. And my coach was like, this is going to be a tough journey, but if you're willing to do it, we'll do it. So. And you just decided to do it. I decided to do it. And from there on, it still wasn't fair. <laughs> I still had so many trials to go through and then being an alternate in 2016 Olympics, I got fourth at Olympic trials and they replaced fourth and fifth with seventh and eighth and I didn't make it. So that was another really big trial to go through and yeah. to come back and train for the next one. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but see, to me, that is, it. it's fascinating. It's incredible. Um, th those are really what inspires. P those stories are so inspiring because you could have just said no more especially after 2016, right? like that, and you kept going. How did it feel when you got that medal? I, I just, I, I have to hear it from you. How did you feel? It was so, I don't even remember. I was just mostly in shock. Like, you know, with the story with Simone and her backing out and then me going in when I was just about to fly home. And like, I remember Simone just saying to me, she's like, you weren't even crying. And because I was like, I'm tired of crying. I've been crying this yeah. whole time and like so full of emotions that I was just so excited that like all my hard work paid off. And like, how cool is it to go to Olympics where we've all had these trials? We all went through COVID and we all still ended up with a medal. Each and every one of us on that Olympic team representing Team USA went home with a medal. Like, how cool is that? It's amazing. It's amazing. How many times has that even happened? Do you know? Not that often. Yeah. Like, there's so many girls I've been to two, three Olympics already for their country and haven't even gotten a medal. Yeah. I, uh, I thought about you this week and I watched UFC 287. I don't know if anyone watched that, but the guy that ended up knocking out the champion, they gave him the mic and he said something so inspiring. I actually thought of you cause I knew that we were doing this today, but he talked about, you know, I hope everyone in the world has an opportunity just like this, just like this to, to feel and experience what I'm feeling now. And he said it in all sorts of different ways with a bunch of explicitives. And, but um, he's like, but I fought for this very moment and everyone needs a chance. Everyone needs a chance to have a moment just like this. You just got to be willing to keep going and going and going. And, uh, and you did that, which is such a, a cool story. So I commend you. Is there anything next for you? I know, don't you do like some training or something or like camps for <laughs> yeah. gymnastics? Are you are you stepping away from gymnastics? Are you done? It's mom mode now. Yeah, it's it's been hard. I mean, I went to school for sports broadcasting. So You I, would be great at that. You would actually be know, so good at that. That's what everyone says. Are you going to do it? Well, I it was hard because I travel all the time and I'm doing appearances and public speaking and doing all these things. And then I was going to. So during Red Rocks preview before the Utah season started, um, I went and kind of commentated a little bit. I got to commentate the beam rotation and sit in, listen in. And obviously in school, you don't really learn a ton. I mean, at least at Utah, they don't have like a sports broadcasting right. program. Right. So I was like, I want to shadow a lot this year and make sure this is like what I want to do. And so I was going to go and shadow like the last two meets at the U. And then I've been so sick being pregnant. Yeah. And so then like, I feel like things have just kind of changed at the moment. So like when I do it, I feel like I enjoy it. So I just need to like, I'm just scared to have a job. Okay. I've never had a job. Gymnastics has been my life. That, that is a job. It's a Are job, you kidding me? That's like, a full-time gig. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know what it's like to like work, you know, like I do, you know, you influencer know. stuff yeah. and social media, but like that's easy. You know, yeah. it's just kind of like day-to-day -day life, but I don't know. 
So I got to figure that out. So we'll see if I do that. Um, I obviously want to shadow more, but season's kind of ending. Yeah. And if I want to get my foot in the door, I need to do it now. So yeah. Yeah. we'll see. Everyone says I'll be good at it. So I'm like, maybe I should just you re- do you it. You really should do it. As long as you're passionate about it and you want it, I think you would be awesome because you're so calm and collected on camera. I've seen you, um, you know, many times over. Uh, so, so being sick, let's talk about, let's move on to, <laughs> to the next thing. So I feel like it's so unfair for some women. And then like, it's a breeze. Like my sister-in-law, Kate, she, not even a day of sickness. Like, I don't even think she barfed once. Mm-hmm. And then there's other women that just get their butt kicked. Like my wife, Mikkel, she barfed and barfed and barfed for months over. I don't, I don't understand how people or how some women get dealt that card. Um, but you know, in the last, the last two or three months on every one of our four kids, she was bedridden. Like we're talking laid no. up. So I'm not saying this is going to happen to you. Right. So, oh, no. cause she has, um, <laughs> was it called preeclampsia? Oh, She's got oh, like, yeah, that's it, good. Yeah. yeah, not fun. It, it's tough. But, um, I mean, you're battling through it. I, I, you're, you're three months deep, four months. How, how far along? Is it four months? I'm 15 weeks. I'll be 16 on Wednesday. So. I, I think I heard the first three months are the worst, right? right, right. For like morning sickness yep. and stuff. How did you battle through it? Were there moments? I mean, do you think that the sickest you've ever been is in the past three or four months? Have you been sicker? I don't think so. I mean, I thought COVID, when I had COVID was pretty rough because I had it for three weeks and then I just started going back into the gym and then like three days later I got pneumonia. So I thought oh that my. was rough. But then I literally told Jonas, I'm like, this is way harder than training for the Olympics. <laughs> like... I don't know what it is. Cause like, at least with gymnastics, like it's tough. We have hard days, but yeah. like I can push through it. I get through it yeah, yeah, yeah. and I like the challenge and it's fun, difficult, but fun. And this not fun. Like it's supposed to be the most exciting time of your life. And you're like, this is horrible. So I just, I just <laughs> wish I knew more. Like I didn't really realize like I have 12 nieces and nephews, yeah. but I was so young and didn't experience what my siblings, I mean, they weren't that sick. They just felt like they were going to throw up and never really did. And of course I would get it so bad. You know, we've been wanting kids forever and I wanted to start trying right after the Olympics, yeah. but then I had one year of school left and my sister's like, see, aren't you glad that you waited to get pregnant? Cause I, there's no way I would have been able to drive to the U three yeah. times a week yeah. from American Fork yeah. and do all that. So no I doubt. guess it all worked out the perfect timing, but man, it's been brutal. Well, just keep battling. This little one's worth Thanks. it. Is it boy or girl? If you had to say. Do you know? It's so hard because everyone says, oh, you'll know. But like, I've just been so mixed. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's a boy. Sometimes I feel like it's a girl. And then I really want a girl. But now I'm like, I kind of want a boy. But then I want a girl. I'm like, I don't even know. It's so difficult. So I think I told you this, Jonas, but I, of my, of my 18 nieces and nephews, because they're, they're 19 on my wife's side. um, I guessed 17 out of 18, right? No. Okay. So what are you feeling? Ladies and gentlemen. They are having a boy. <laughs> Jonas you is heard excited. It <laughs> you heard it first right here. You know, on the Warner side, I was absolutely horribly off. So um, I guess this doesn't really matter what I'm sharing with you right now. Uh, it's just nothing but granddaughters on the Warner side. Um, but we have a few boys too. So uh, what has been your most random craving? Craving for pregnant women? Cravings are crazy. Absolutely nuts. What it's- is your... It's been hard because I feel like I haven't really had any. Really? Because I've been so sick, like eating cantaloupe. food. Yeah, cantaloupe. but I don't even oh, cantaloupe so anymore. Oh, you do or don't? I don't now. I was kind of eating cantaloupe because it was like the one thing that was kind of watery and like juicy and kind of didn't have too much flavor, Yeah. you know? But like, I still don't like have an appetite. Like, it's so hard to eat. Like, we go out to eat and I eat like two bites and I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, I might throw I up, you know? I can't imagine that. So it's like I still... I mean, I think I've had little cravings of things, but I'm hoping in the next like month or two it will start hitting me. Yeah. But realistically, I haven't really had one yet. Interesting. How about smells? My wife, there's like oh. certain soaps. There's like this, I love this lemon soap. And she's like, get that away from me. Like it makes her sick. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Have what smells? Oh, everything. When Jonas is cooking, even when I'm sleeping next to him, his armpit smell. Bad. That's <laughs> <laughs> just bad. Sorry, babe. I'm exposing you to the whole world now. It's all right. Hey, you know. But um, I couldn't wear makeup. I couldn't brush my teeth. Like even just putting toothpaste in my mouth, I was throwing up. So like my teeth are yellow now because I hardly could brush them. Oh my god. It's gosh. been. It was. It was rough. Like everything. 
It was bad. Such a wild ride. Was there ride. anything else you remember of me? Smells. Being weird too. Mellow. Oh yeah, mellow because she smelled mellow like the her cat. lavender litter box because we have like a lavender smell for her litter, and I couldn't hold her, touch her, be next to her. So Jonas finally got plain smelled litter, so I could at least pet my cat. Can we talk about mellow for a minute? So I, I have to be honest, I do not like cats at all. What? I've never liked That's cats. Okay. I'm not a cat guy. It's like dog guy, cat guy. I mean, it just depends. But let's be real. Your cat is a dog. Like I, <laughs> I, I see videos like Mellow does things that dogs do. Did you guys, tra- crazy. did you guys train that cat to do what it does? We like it does dog stuff. We don't do anything. We just play with her and have fun. She's, she, I mean, I've had cats my whole life and she is definitely a different species for sure. Um, like cool, like a cool fetch, cat. does tricks. Yeah. No cats do that. Yeah. That's not a cool. cat. It's not a cat. <laughs> teach her to play tag yeah she plays tag and like hide and go seek it's so fun that is impossible for a cat i've never in my life seen a cat like that ever so bravo to you you guys did something you're the cat whisperers you did something so um michaela i want to go into some fun questions now about you um i want to learn more about you and you know i want to go way back so as a kid what were you into that you may be embarrassed about today. Is there something like cartoon? What cartoons did you watch? That's always super interesting to learn about. I mean, we watched, I was Disney Channel all always the time. Disney Channel. Nickelodeon, everything. Like we're big TV people. As a kid, you were watching oh, yeah. Nickelodeon. Yeah, and I still am. And Jonas gets so mad at me. I but, love all no. the Disney classics. I'll go and watch Hannah Montana again, all the things. Oh yeah, good one. So good. One. good. What's you your like, favorite? Do you like Hannah Montana? No, no. Oh, okay. Um, right. <laughs> no, I, I never did, but I was just, I know my sister did. Um, Miley's actually a decent actress. She did. She was, she did she's talented. Yeah. She gets hate all the time. She's actually incredibly talented. So Miley, I respect you. I do. She is talented. What was your favorite? What's your favorite Disney animated film of all time? Oh my gosh. Do you have a favorite? I mean, I'd always, I always have to stick with Cinderella. That's a classic. The classic. She's so my favorite. But it's hard because there's too many good ones. Yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of great Disney films. My favorite is Robin Hood. Oh. Have you ever seen the Robin yeah, Hood one? It's good. So good. That was the one I watched, or Jungle Book, when I was a kid. Um, what is your favorite line of clothing sponsorship opportunity? Oh, I'd have to go with Madewell. Really? Yeah, because I'm small. Nothing fits, and they make petite. Yeah, my wife so loves Madewell as well. That's right. That's good. How about your favorite shoe line? I probably just have to go with Nike. Really? Yeah. Do you I like those Nike. APLs? I do like APL too. APL is dope. It's so good. Yeah. So I'm like, can you be a sponsor 24 7, please? APL is <laughs> legit. Um, the APL was actually one of the sponsors yeah. to her campaign, and they sent us some free shoes. Those things are Awesome. Awesome. We went to the APL store and we were just in LA. Oh, yeah, yeah. At the, uh, at the Grove. Was it the Grove? Yeah. yeah. The Grove. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's a good one. Okay, so more more interesting questions. What's your biggest pet peeve about your husband, Jonas? Telling me what to do. Oh. <laughs> Constantly. He goes to work and gets mad at me when I come home and I've done nothing. He's like, I'm the one that works hard and I pay all the bills and you just sit here. <laughs> so he's Dude, always, she's pregnant with your child. Before he goes to work. He'll say, I'll give her chores. he'll give me chores. So what are you going to do today? Laundry either today or tomorrow because we're leaving on Wednesday and da 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 and just, oh, and then I've been man. so sick. So sometimes I kind of get it done. Other days I just sit on the couch all day and it really drives him crazy, oh, but man. he's learning patience. So we, it's good. we all do. We all do. Yeah. Jonas is a great guy. Okay, everyone. He, he is pretty he good. He is a sweetheart. He's a, he's a great guy. Now, if you saw Jonas, I mean, a lot of the, everyone that follows you knows Jonas. Jonas is six, five, seven, six, seven. And you are how tall? Five foot. Okay. Six, seven and five foot. That is unbelievable. Sean Bradley. Remember Sean Bradley? Bradley, I think his first wife was your height and he's seven. Who is that? We're getting old. Sean Bradley, (laughs) a basketball player. Oh. I think he was seven, six and I think his wife was five, two. Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So 
Okay, so th- I, I think I can tell the story, but can we talk about how you guys mm-hmm. met in the library? This is kind of funny. Like your first, <laughs> your first, your first ever encounter. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, so I mean, I, I obviously swooped in. Jonas was talking to this girl from Arizona, mm. and I had been following him on social media for a little bit, but he didn't have very many pictures. So I was like, oh, he's cute, but like, I don't really know. Of course, he starts posting more. It's taking this girl out. So I DM'd him and I said, oh my gosh, I know her, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then he's like, oh, well, I'll be in Bountiful tomorrow. You want to hang out? Because his family lives in Bountiful. But I'm like, sure. But then he literally was just on a date with that girl for her birthday and posted about it on his story. Mm. So I'm like, play ya. So I was like, but sure, we'll hang out. So finished practice, me and my best friend that knew Jonas from high school. She was the one that told me to follow him. And we're in the library and he comes walking in. And I could not get up out of the desk like, that we were sitting in. I was like, you didn't tell me he was that tall. He's going to make fun of me when he finds out how short I am. But little comes to know he, him and his friends Googled me. So he knew I was five foot. So I'm surprised he was into that because he was always into girls that were five, five and taller. Hmm. So I There's guess a lot of guys out, that are into, you know, the, the shorter girl. There's like, it's so weird. You know. And then one of my best friends like hated me because... What's up with all the short girls taking, you know, the tall guys? Because she's six one. Oh wow! And so she's like, "There's never any tall guys for us tall girls." But I'm like, "That's because you're not fun size. You're kind of heavy to pick up." <laughs> I'm like, "Jonas can just whip me around," and I'm like, <laughs> okay. "You're the same size as your man. A man uh, the, don't want that." Oh my gosh! <laughs> I that, don't know. That that's hilarious. Okay. We're just more fun. You okay. Know? So, what is your guilty pleasure when it comes to food? What can you not turn down? I know that being pregnant. Is definitely oh. makes it different. Cereal. Oh, I, 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 oh, I am a cereal girl. So yeah, yeah. we have that in common. Love I it. love, I grew up on cereal. I remember going to Jonas's house for the first time and he, his family had like Raisin Bran. And I'm like, what's going on? Raisin Bran? Who eats Raisin Bran? It's probably great. <laughs> it's so <right> gross. <laughs> we grew up on all the junk cereal, but cereal for sure is a go-to and that's, been tasting good to me being pregnant um but i'm a big like mexican girl and i can't eat that being pregnant so it's been oh, kind of sad but that's rough what's your fajitas. best what, what's your favorite mexican joint here locally that's always interesting to oh la costa or what is it called no oh well that's one of them i like la costa which is right by our house but del mar, del mar. what's del mar they make the best siberia yeah, tacos been to Sol Agave. Sol Agave is the really good one del mar is like a cafe style version Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So it it's out. where it used to be. And then yeah. when they moved Solgave, they built that one, Del Mar. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go. I am going to check that out. Okay. Um, so, next question for you. Growing up, have you stayed close with all of your high school friends? I, I've always, I've always uh, been pretty fascinated about how it's like you go through levels. Have you stayed close with one friend from being little all the way till now or is it isn't it weird how that happens it's so weird do you even keep in touch not really i do keep in touch and i follow on social media one of my best friends jada from elementary school we from time to time i mean i was homeschooled sixth seventh sixth seventh and eighth grade so really kind of hard yeah kind of hard and then i ended up not going to the same high school but then i think they ended up kind of moving a little bit further away but kind of during that time i'd go see her here and there and then after a while, I just was so busy with my career, just kind of eh. But through social media, we talk a little bit. But that's that's kind of like with all my high school friends. It's like, you know, you might talk, oh, let's let's catch up. Yeah. Like if I'm in Arizona, let's go get lunch. And then it never happens. But it is weird how life changes like that. Yeah. And, and the reason I ask this question is, you know, once you hit this, you know, becoming a famous Olympian, do you feel like that? put some of the friendships that you maybe had in jeopardy? Did you start doubting some of the friendships or did, did you know, when, when people become famous, mm-hmm. right? Is it tougher to find friends that, that you can trust or do you feel like you lost friends because of it? I don't think so. Not at all. I sure. feel like all my friends have been super supportive and have supported me to this day. Um, I don't know. I think I've had the best friends. I've never had anybody do anything nasty or have felt used really or yeah. 
which I've been pretty lucky because I feel like you see that all the time. Yeah. So it's kind of sad. It's happened to a couple of my friends. Uh, you know, they they're, they're more protective of, you know, allowing themselves to to become friends like they once were, which I, I don't like. Um, right. Makes me sad. I think the best thing, though, is like a lot of people, some people don't even know who I am before we meet them. And then, of course, it comes up in conversation. They're like, oh, that's so cool. But it's nice that they get to know me before. Oh, you're an Olympian, you know. Yeah. So I really like that. So uh, a couple more, I guess, serious questions. It's such a, an interesting day and age with social media and content that's out there. And, you know, I have a little girl and I I really feel like there is a different pressure this day and age for, for young women or for women in mm-hmm. general because of what they are seeing on a daily basis. And one of the things I really I, I love about you is that you you keep it real, but there's there's always going to be pressure there. What what advice would you give? Let, let's say that you know I'm wrong and you end up having a little girl. Um, what are some of the things that that you would tell young women and just women in general about being themselves when it comes to social media and pushing aside the pressures that that you might feel? Right. It, I mean, it's hard. Social media is a big thing for me, and I talk about it with Jonas all the time, and I've kind of said the same thing like. What's it going to be like with our kids and the things they're going to yeah. learn and the things they're oh, going to yeah. see because it's just so different. Yeah. And me being a public figure, I've been judged horribly, you know, and it, and everybody witnesses it. Simone witnesses it, yeah. tons of athletes, you know, and just seeing them go through that and how you just kind of have to block it out and say, well, you don't get to, you don't know me. I know myself. I know what I'm doing. And that was the best thing about making a YouTube channel is everyone got to know the real me. Yeah. You know, we were real. We did all the behind the scenes. And I think that's the best thing about social media is just being real, staying true to who you are, not following what everyone else is doing because it's the trend. It's the thing to do. Yeah. Like stand up for what you believe in. Who cares what people think of you? You're going to have haters anyway. So, you know, do what you want, believe what you want and share the share with the world, you know, the good parts. It's kind of like the same thing with being pregnant. You know, I, I didn't know nothing about pregnancy, you know, like this is my first time and I just wish, you know, more people would have talked about pregnancy and yeah. what they went through. They just show the good parts like I'm pregnant, gender reveal, baby, you know, life's so great. And I'm like, talk about the hard parts yeah. of it, of being a mom. Yeah. Like, I want to know the raw, the thick and the thin. Like, I want to know it all. Like, I'm a first time mom. I, I want to know things, you know, and I love the people that are real because I feel like I can connect and learn. And that's what I'm hoping that we can do now transitioning into parents is just to be a good role model and a leader and to help young women and young girls to chase their dreams and to never give up and to stick up for what they believe in. I love that. I love that. So speaking of, you know, where you can find goodness on social media, do you have any accounts that you want to shout out that you enjoy following that whether it's inspire you as a human being or person or as a mother or fashion? I'd be curious to know. I, it's hard because I follow, I feel like I follow a lot of, I mean, Instagram influencers. I've gotten to know a lot because, you know, Utah yeah, yeah, yeah. is known for the influencers oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah. um, and I've gone to so many events and so many people, but one that I love is Kaylee Monday. Kaylee Monday. And is she married to Benj or to, um, which one, which one is she married to? Is it? I want to say it's Ben. Is it Ben? So there's. Um, I feel like I should know because yeah. <laughs> we go Sam to. Sam or Sam. So I, I, I know remember. all the Mondays. Do you? Yeah, I know okay. Mondays, yeah. I love her. And we, I mean, with being LDS, we go on temple dates. That's fun. And with this other girl, Madison, and it's just so fun. And she's awesome. She's true. You know, she talks about her religion, her life, her crazy kids, and um, just watching them go from day to day. It's just fun. And she's cool. so genuine and real. And like hanging out with her, it's just the best. So she's one of my favorites. It's cool. Um, obviously, I follow a lot of people. Um, sometimes I like don't care to follow them, but I do, you know, because they're my friends. But some of the stuff they post, it gets hard, you know. You're just yeah. – social media is just a hard thing. It, it is. It's so the hard. The pressure – I mean, I'm a guy. I don't feel like guys have the pressure that, that girls do. And maybe I'm right. wrong. I mean, it, it's interesting the pressures that men and women face in life, especially this day and age. Um I was talking recently with some friends about some of the pressures that that men feel. It's very different than what women feel. We're so different, but we have our things. I think Time Magazine put an article, or they they had a they had a whole deal on who has it tougher in life, men or women. And they had like major specialists and you know analysts really take a look at every aspect of life, and what they determined is it's the same level. It's a, it's the same level. While 
you guys go through pains and agony that we will never understand. <laughs> you know, men go through certain pressures and, you All know, right. tough things that, right. that women sometimes don't understand. It's, it's, it's a crazy day and age. Did you know that, that women, or excuse me, men are four times more likely to commit suicide than women? Really? Four times. I, and yeah. I, I just, I actually just learned this statistic. And there are four times the amount of suicides happening with men than more than women. And it's, there's pressures involved. It's, it's really interesting. But, but, but I, then I look at the women this day and age and the pressure. I, I look, you know, I'm on social media mm -hmm. and I just see so many people portraying something that they're not. Right. Do you have right. any friends? I mean, no names. Of yeah. Course, yes. Where yes. you're like, what are you doing? Yes. And it's so hard because like sometimes I want to hop in their DMs and just be like, why are you doing this? Why are you feeling this way? Like, can I help you? You know? And it's just like, because everyone else is doing it. Yeah. You know, it's just so hard. And it's like, just be yourself. That's the best part about social media is you get to be yourself. I don't know why we have to have this certain way of looking at it. You know, like, I don't know why we just can't be, be ourselves. Real. Yeah, yeah just... it's, it's weird. Well, one of my favorite stories, I think I told you this, my aunt Jill, you know, she got really real because she was so real about all her, pre her the problems and you know, she was an alcoholic and she almost lost her family and she almost lost herself and everything. She got really open. And guess what? The minute that she got open about her struggles, boom. Right. Her, her brand exploded. Right. Because everyone's going through something. You Everyone. might look at a family and be like, they're so perfect. Like sometimes I look at people and I'm like, they're so perfect. And they, you know, have such a perfect house and a perfect car and a perfect family. But they are going through so much and they really need love, yeah. love and support. And I feel like if they were to open up, I mean, you don't have to share your whole life experience, but just to come out about it and to have that love and support, there's so many people that can relate. No, I agree. And there's there's so much power in being honest and open up, mm -hmm. open up about your uh, about your struggles because your struggles you may you may save a life. You right. really may save a life. Um, I, I had a Heidi Powell in here, you know, a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. You you know Heidi, yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, we need to do a collaboration between the two of you, but she, you know, she talked about body dysmorphia. She's like in the best shape anyone could ever be in. And, you know, she started opening up about it and her brand just started doing this. Mm -hmm. She wasn't constantly portraying perfection. And, you know, she's talking about her struggles. You never know what any, that what someone is dealing with. Right. Um, another question, when is it an appropriate time? I mean, would you appreciate if one of your friends reached out and said, Hey, are you okay? Like, or, or why are you doing this? How does someone approach someone on social media about a situation that they feel like maybe they should, they should make an effort? I mean, when's the right time? Is there a right time? I don't know. It's so hard, but I feel like when you get that text though, of someone reaching out, you're like, wow, someone cares. That's and good. I think anytime, you know, if you're feeling it, reach out. Yeah, act on emotion that you feel. Right. That can be tough, though. So it you is you tough because to there's offend. times where I want to reach out and I'm like, it is hard. There, okay, so really, there's a girl right now. I went to school with her back in high school. And she's just posting stuff that you're like, you can just tell she's hurting. It's funny mm -hmm. how she's trying to portray happiness and perfection. Right. But she's struggling. And I, I maybe I should act on it. I, I, I'm really having a hard time mm -hmm. watching what she's posting because she looks miserable. You think that I should? Should I just do it? I think you should do it. I mean, worse comes to worse, like, you know, reaching out to someone, they just say no, or they don't respond, or I don't know, you know, like I feel like it doesn't hurt. Yeah, I just don't, why are you judging me? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it makes it tough, but right. um, anyway, Michaela, you, you are an inspiration to so many. Um, I'm stoked you're writing a book, in fact, Shout out to Steve Troja. I connected him with your husband. He is an incredible guy to go to get a book going. Perfect. So um, I, it'll it'll be a good one. There's so many other things that I'd love to chat with you about. But more, more importantly, like you're going to be an amazing mother, number one. Thanks. You really should look into being a sports analyst, <laughs> commentator, or host somewhere. You you do so so well with that. And you claim that you don't know what work is like this kind of work, but you <laughs> guaranteed have worked harder than just about everyone on planet earth. Um, but I, I commend you and have so much respect for you and thanks for putting up with my buddy Jonas. Um, Jonas is a stud and he always talks about how wonderful and beautiful and amazing you are every day, at least every 15 Aww. to 20 minutes. 
I so love he, you. He he is he's a good dude. <laughs> um. Anyway, I any closing remarks? I do want to know where can they where can folks follow you on um, social media? Instagram Michaela Skinner twenty sixteen. Twitter Michaela Skinner, and then of course our YouTube channel. We just started bringing it back up again, and we have yeah. a podcast. So agree to disagree with Michaela and Jonas. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Um, we got lots of fun things ahead of us, and we're excited for the future. And again, we're so grateful for you, Scott. You're the best. He's the man. Oh, thank and you. I'm so glad that you asked me to be on this podcast. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You guys are going to be awesome when the kid comes uh, for uh, YouTube and videos. Have have fun <laughs> with it. I've I've got a, a family coming in. Have you heard of the Fish Fam? Yes. They are. They're yeah. going to be. Uh, they're going to be in here next oh, week. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, Kyler's a good friend from from way back when. But uh, you guys could definitely fit that mold. Um, it'll be fun. But I, I appreciate you being on. And, and a closing, you toss me that. Yes. I always give. <laughs> Cocoa Puffs happens to be her number one. Actually, it's like right there with Cocoa Pebbles, which I am a huge fan yeah, of. Yeah, yes. I know. So, this is just what's been tasting good to me lately. So Really? So it does work. Cocoa Puffs. Like you, you're you're going to be able to keep that down. Yeah, I should. Good. Let's hope. So anyway, thanks for being on. Yep. Thanks, Until Scott. next week, bye.